In this video, we're going to be taking a look at basic queries using MySQL and the MySQL Workbench. I'm going to be using the sample database that you can install with MySQL. And if you don't already have that, I'm going to leave a link in the video where you can go to my GitHub repository and download it. But to give you an idea of what that database looks like, we're going to take a look at the ERD. Okay, so it's a fictitious database and it basically we're renting movies. Okay, so we can see it's a pretty involved database. I'm going to be using exclusively this film table for this video. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to use the database. So we're going to run use Sakilla. Okay, and to run commands in the workbench, you're either going to click the lightning bolt with the I bar here to run a single query or command, or you're going to run everything in the window with just the lightning bolt. Okay, the shortcut for doing that is uh, control enter for a single line and control shift enter for all the lines. All right, sometimes you just want to see what tables are available so we can get that with the show tables command. And you can see that gives us a list of all the tables in that database. Okay, if you need to see what columns are in a database, we can use the describe command and then follow it with the table name that we want to describe. So since we're going to be using film, we might want to take a look at the columns there. Okay, so now we're ready to start running our queries. And the most basic query has a select part and we tell it what columns we want. And the asterisk tells us that we want all columns. And then the second part that's required is the table. So we're going to get every column and every row from the film table. Okay, so usually though, you probably want to do something like get a selected number of columns or a selected number of rows. So we'll start off just by limiting the columns. So we're going to select. All right, and then I'm going to get the title, uh, the rating, and the length. All right, again, from film. All right, and, and this is not case sensitive, but generally we treat the SQL commands themselves as case sensitive to sort of distinguish them. But you can see in the workbench that it uses coloring of the text for keywords. Okay, so this will be a comment and we'll get all rows all right, and selected columns. Okay, so we'll go ahead and run that. All right, so we can see it's a little bit more manageable here and depending on what we want to do, maybe this is the result we're actually looking for. Here we see that there are a number of ratings here, okay, and obviously they're repeated, and maybe we want to get a list of just the available ratings, okay? So we can do that with the keyword distinct. Okay, once again, we'll just do it on that one column, and then it'll be from film. Okay, so we can see that, okay, it gives us a list and maybe we want to present it in alphabetical order. And often enough, we'd probably want to sort this to present it in a little bit more human friendly way. All right, so I'm going to add something here to allow that. Okay, and I'm going to move my SQL a little bit to make it more readable. All right, and the clause I'm going to add here is called order by and uh, we're just order by the column we want to sort on. So we run that and now we are presented with a sorted list of those ratings. All right, so usually though, we probably want to see not only selected columns, but selected rows. So we are going to run a similar query to the previous one where we saw the title rating and length. Okay, and now we're going to add a limiter here. We're going to meet a specific criteria using the where clause. All right, and so we're going to just look for ratings where they are R. Okay, so we run that and we see just the R rated movies. And if you look down here, it'll tell you how many rows you got. So that was 195. Okay, uh, we can also meet more than one criteria. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. All right, and I'll look for one or more criteria. Okay, and I'm just going to edit the where clause and I'm going to add the keyword or and we're going to look for length that is less than 75. Okay, so this will show all the movies that are R or they have a length of less than 75. All right, so you can see that the first several here are not R rated, but they do have a length of less than 75. 
So the query is doing what we expected. And the OR keyword here almost always gives you more results since you are loosening the criteria. All right, and we do have 371 rows instead of the 195. Okay, if you need to meet multiple criteria, okay, we can do that. Once again, I'll copy this. All right, and I'm just going to change the keyword or to the keyword and, and now it has to meet both conditions in order to be in the result set. And this will always limit the results. Okay, so originally we had 195 when we used or we had 371. And now we have 32 movies that meet both criteria rating R and the length is less than 75. There's sort of a shortcut for using or and I'll just paste and I'll get rid of this. But what if we want to see movies where the rating is R or NC17. Okay, I'm going to replace or with the word in. And then I'm going to put in parentheses a comma separated list of the the ratings that I'm interested in. Okay, so now we should see around 400. And we get 405. And we can see that yep, we have ratings of both NC17 or R. All right, so the syntax is a little bit more compact. If I needed to use R like I did above, I would have to type the word rating again. All right, so it's just a little bit more convenient probably to use in. Okay, we can do the opposite too. We can look at the complement of this thing with the keyword not in. All right, and now we'll see the other three ratings. Okay, let's take another look at sorting. And I will start with this query, so everything that is not in R or NC17. Okay, and I'm going to add that order by clause that we saw earlier. And this time I'm going to look at length. All right, so by default, it's going to sort this thing in ascending order. So we'll see the shortest movies first. All right, but often enough, when you're working with numerical data, you want to see it in descending order. So the longest movie first. And uh, we just add the modifier on here, descending. And then if you wanted to see something like the top five longest movies instead of this list, we can go ahead and limit the output. And I'm going to do that. I'll copy this again. And I'm going to add one more clause to our query. And it's going to be limit. All right, and then the number that I want to see. So that will give me the top five results. And there they are. Okay, I just want to also note that if you look up here in the toolbar, you'll see a limit to 1000 rows and that that's sort of the default when you open up workbench, no matter how many rows are in your table, it won't show more than 1000 on the screen, unless you specifically tell it to. So sometimes you get a little bit. So sometimes this leads you to believe that there's only so many results in your result set, but it's really being limited by default by workbench. So you just have to watch out for that. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you is the wild cards. All right, and uh, wild cards come in two flavors. There's a percent and there's an underscore. All right, the underscore looks for a single character and the percent looks for any group of characters. Okay, so let's take a look at how we would use this. Okay, so once again, we're going to be limiting uh, the rows that we see. So we're going to be looking for the ratings. And instead of using the in or the and or the equals or something like that, we're going to use this keyword like. And in this case, we're going to see anything that starts with a P and is followed by any number of additional characters. All right, so we should see the PGs and the PG13s, and that is what we get. Okay, you can stack these things up. So if I put a percent sign in front of it, I'm basically saying anything that contains a P. All right, uh, this would be anything that uh, ends in a P. All right, and just so you see what the underscores do, right, that would be uh, starts with a P and has any second character. All right starts with a P and has any two more characters. Okay, so if I run this, I'll get nothing because there is nothing that has exactly 
three characters in it. Okay, so I hope that helps you get started with basic queries using MySQL and the Workbench.